Hello YouTube. I meant to start this sooner because I couldn't find much online about how to do this. I'm changing the wheel bearing on the front of a 2015 Mitsubishi Mirage. Um, yeah, it did not look easy online and I decided to take it on anyways. But um, I just wanted to show you guys what I had to do to get it off. So. So with the tire on and everything, you got this stupid fucking nut. And normally there's like a cotter pin or like a, a castle nut. This thing, they like beat the side of it to hold it down. So you have to get a new nut. I'll put a, a link to it in the description. I've never seen this before. It's fucking the stupidest shit I've ever seen. Like you can't get it off without gumming up the... The threads on the on the damn hub nut the hub shaft so so what you got to do is with that on there I, I just busted a, a flathead screwdriver I busted the handle off of it so something like this I busted this part off and you got to slide it in in the channel and then just beat it as much as you can up try not to gum up the threads too much and, and then just crank it off. My, um, my impact didn't work, so I'm doing this uh, all by hand. Um, just gotta lower the car onto the wheel and then get that off. Um, if you look on the, on the rim, you gotta pull out the center part. And uh, that's how you get to the nut. Pull it out and then, um, let's see what size it was. It's a 32 millimeter. 32 millimeter or one and a fourth work for that nut. So you, so you get that off. Um, you, you loosen it up, take the tire off. Um, then once you get the tire off, you gotta take the, the brake caliper off. You got, um, you got two bolts on the back of that. You can see them right there, right there right here I took those off and then you got to take the speedo sensor off which is right there that was easy so you take all that off take the rotor off and then this is how far I've gotten so far you got to take these two nuts out on top nuts and bolts on top and then I'm having trouble on this last one because Rotating the whole knuckle whenever I'm trying to loosen it, so I gotta figure some way to block that off and get that off. Oh yeah, and then um, this is just hold on by by a nylon nut. It's kind of kind of scary. I mean, usually there's a cotter pin to hold it on, but I guess I'm gonna put a bunch of Loctite when I put reassemble that to uh, keep it from backing out. It's kind of crazy. This car, it's like it's it awesome gas mileage, but. Man, it is like cheap. Alright, I'm gonna see if I can get that off and then I'll I'll come back. Okay, so when you're taking the knuckle off, it'd be better to do this bottom one first. Loosen this thing first, and then do the top ones. I had to put put the nuts back in on the top. And then stuck this hammer against the back side of the knuckle. And then I did the old double wrench trick, like this. So get it like that, loop it through, and that's how I got it off. I was able to break it loose. I already broke it loose, I'm just showing you how I did it. Alright, I'm going to try to get that knuckle off. Okay, so I got that nut off, but I realized that you gotta take this little bracket for the brake caliper off, so. Um, it's a 12 millimeter. Okay, so I got the lower ball joint off 
um, eventually. I uh, could not could not break it loose from the knuckle. And then when I finally did break it loose from the knuckle, it was uh, this the ball joint was free spinning with with the nut on it. So I had to get a hacksaw, cut cut the nut off. You can see it right here. And then I beat it off with the phrasing with a uh, chisel. And then I was able to get the knuckle off. And I mean the ball joint was looking pretty nasty anyway, as you can see it's kind of cracking right there. You can see it right there. It's a little dried out. So I figured I'd replace it anyways. And looked online, and you can't just replace the ball joint. You got to replace this whole control arm, and the auto parts, auto, AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts, neither of them had this in stock. Um, Napa was closed last night by the time I called, so I didn't even call them. But I found uh, this website online, Parts Geek. Um, I was able to order the left and the right one for like I think less than eighty bucks. Um, which one of them was going to be like 80 bucks from the, from AutoZone. So hopefully that gets here soon because my wife needs this car. I'm going to be shuttling her around until we get it fixed. So, um, I got the knuckle off. Once you get the knuckle off. It's gonna look like this. And um, you gotta you gotta beat this uh, the hub out of the bearing. I used the seven eighths um, socket. It said there's a specialty tool, but I didn't have that, and I'm not gonna go buy a specialty tool to try to fix thing something as cheaply as I can. Um, so I just stuck this in there, um, propped, propped it up on, on, on these things on a four by four that, and uh, kind of held it on its side and then uh, beat it out with a hammer, a BFG, wait, BF, big fucking hammer. EFH and oh, it wasn't too bad I got it out so now I just have to get this there's a snap ring you can see it right there snap ring right there I'm gonna pull that out and then press the bearing the rest of the way out I've never encountered a, car, a vehicle that was such a pain in the ass to change a bearing usually you just get a slide hammer and pull it out but you gotta like this things like nest it in there it's like one of those Russian nest and egg, nest and egg dolls, whatever. So I'm gonna try to press that out and check back in. Okay, so I got the, this hub out, and then I had to get this race bear, this race off. Um, I had to kind of look up how to do it. I wasn't familiar with that, but um, so there was no lip for me to like. Put a chisel on and it was super tight right there this was tight against that right there and um i found that this was the easiest way to do it. i have this i have a dremel tool so i use this dremel tool and i very carefully cut an x into the race and um once i got it pretty close i mean you can see i didn't get all the way through i just got it as close as i could and there was still a lot of a lot of steel left on this side that I didn't cut through because that groove is kind of a kind of a sharp edge and you're using a round um, cutting cutting blade whatever you want to call it um, you can't really get in there too deep but uh, I then used the chisel and a hammer and I just give it a few wraps right there across one of the lines and that was enough I don't know if you can see it I was able to crack the race and as soon as that happened it came right off so that's how you get that part off 
And now I'm going to try to push this bearing out with this press. And I'm gonna get that all set up and then I'll, I'll videotape it. Okay, I just got the bearing out. Um, one thing to keep in mind is uh, there's a snap ring on this side, on the outer side. You gotta get that snap ring out. I don't know if I already mentioned that. And then whenever you push it out, you're gonna push it towards the outside of it, so away from all the knuckles and everything. So you gotta put it in like this. I kind of screwed up and I started doing it the other way and I was like, why isn't it, mo why isn't it moving? But uh, flipped it around and it came right out. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with doing this. I'm just kind of like learning as I go. But you're supposed to have a specialty tool to get it out and I just used the socket that fit about the right size into the bearing and then just pressed on that socket and it popped right out. So I have the uh, the new bearing in the freezer. Um, if you freeze it, it makes it a little bit smaller and it'll make it a lot easier to get it, get it into this knuckle. So that's the next step. Okay, so we got the new bearing. It's nice and cold. Let me just put a little oil. Let's put some motor oil on it just to help it slide in a little bit better. Okay, that wasn't good. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I'm a fucking idiot. Don't do that. <clears throat> All right, so I tried using the press to press the new bearing in, but the way that the knuckles set up, it's hard to get like, it's hard to make the surface completely flat. And I didn't have enough, uh, I don't know, little metal pieces to like jig it up to where it would be completely flat. So um, I just used the old bearing. And uh, I tried to use the, use the side that matches that side because it kind of seemed like maybe one side was a little bit smaller than the other. And you really want to make sure that you don't Put any pressure when you're like hammering it on this inner part just on this outer ring right here um, of the bearing so there was like a silver part right here but that fell off when i was taking taking it off so silver to silver i just put it like that and i just tapped it around like this tap the old bearing not the new bearing do not tap the new bearing tap the the old bearing on top of the new bearing on that outside rim a lot harder than I'm doing it right now I'm just doing it to show you and uh, just took my time and just tap around a circle and it'll go in there I got it all the way in now I just got to put the uh, snap ring back in and then press that hub back in there and then we're on the home stretch all right so I went to uh, old Harbor Freight, got some specialty tool snap ring pliers, and uh, they were about what I expected. They bent and they pieces of shit, and I still got the snap ring in though. So what you got to do is get yourself a pair of needle nose, and I just set the snap ring right on top. Find the old one so I can show you. Where is the old one? It was around here somewhere. Here it is. Alright, so what I did was I just set that right on top. Got the needle nose. Put it right in there. Got it, got it about right, and then pinched it and pushed it right in, and it was super easy. You do not need snap uh, snap ring pliers. All right, so that's all in. Now, I think the next part is pressing the hub hub assembly back in. So here we go. Okay, 
I'm going to push, press the uh, hub assembly into the knuckle. I can't do this with one hand, so I'm going to have to do it and then show you afterwards. I'm just going to set it right on top and press it in. I'm going to get a, a socket that fits in that center portion because you don't want to put pressure on the outside. You want to put all the pressure on that inner uh, bearing area because those center parts will pull out. I'm going to do that and come back. Okay, so I press the hub in and then bolted it back up. Got those two in. You got the uh, steering knuckle attached. But I have to wait for this. Um, lower ball joint this thing this thing right here yeah you can't order this separately you gotta order it as the whole fucking arm so that'll be here in four days and until then this little green pecker is gonna be sitting here not moving well cause uh of that part. But I'll have new bushings and new ball joint and uh, I actually had to order both front steering arms. So I'll probably do that other one soon. But yeah nothing about this has been easy. What a pain in the ass. I'll get another video once I get that part and I'll place that thing. It's only three bolts, but man, it just stinks to have to wait on it. Okay, so I forgot to record this part, but um, I just got the new uh, control arm, ball joint, bushing assembly. Um, super easy. Just pull out this one. There's no nut behind that one. Just there's a threaded uh, part inside of the, the frame. Um, and you got this guy, it's got a nut on top and then a uh, head of the bolt at the bottom. Uh, you see, I still gotta tighten that shit up, but so, so just uh, let me see, I think it was a 17, 17 millimeter. Let me see, I think both of these are 17 millimeter, yeah, they're both 17 millimeter top and bottom, and that one's 17 millimeter. And then this guy is 19, the ball joint. Just got that tightened up. Uh, and this one was, uh, what was it, 15 maybe? I don't remember, it was around 15. Um, parts key, that's where I got the, this part from. I got the front uh, left and right control arm for like 80 bucks, which I uh, called Advanced Auto Parts, and it was gonna be like, like 80 bucks for one of them, and they couldn't get they couldn't even get one right now. And if I were to order, order an OE, OEM part, it was gonna be like $400 for one part, so parts key, uh, it was a good deal on this one. So uh, I think all I have left is I still gotta tighten up everything and then tighten up this uh, hub nut, this stupid thing. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so I went through and I double checked every every bolt and put Loctite on everything and. The last thing I have to do is this um, flange nut, uh, you gotta tighten it down to 167 foot-pounds. So I'm gonna have to drop the car. I, I, I tightened it up as much as I could uh, without the wheel free spinning. And I'm gonna have to drop the car back down on the ground and tighten it and use the, the ground to hold the wheel steady. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. 
Okay, so I tightened the flange nut up to 167 foot pounds, but you have to stake the flange nut and you can't really get anything in there to beat it without taking the tire back off. So you gotta put the tire on, tighten the flange nut, take the tire back off and stake it. So I'm gonna stake it right now. Staked. Okay, bearing number two. Again, you have to have the wheel on the ground if you don't have an air tool and loosen up the lug nuts and then jack it up and take them off. And then you gotta take the tire off and then you gotta straighten that out to get the nut off. So I'm gonna go ahead and straighten it out and then put the tire back on, put it on the ground so it has tension and I can undo that nut. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So this is what I'm doing. Tapping that in there, trying to straighten out that nut. bent it. Whatever, you can see it. On to the next screwdriver. <laughs> 